Hi everyone, and thanks for watching this video. I'm BK with Mostly Casual Commander, and today we have a game of Commander for you. This game features four new commanders from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. The commanders for this game are Shorakai, Genesis Engine, Chishiro, The Shattered Blade, Kodama of the West Tree, and Hinata, Dawn Crowned. We are just a group of friends trying to have fun playing our favorite games. We enjoy making this content for everybody, and we hope that you like it too. If you do, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and like the content you've been enjoying. Feel free to comment on any of the videos that you've been watching, and we will certainly do our best to get back to you. Of note, we are just a bunch of average players, so if you are looking for expert plays or optimized deck lists, you will likely not find that on this channel. And with that, let's get to the gameplay. So kicking us off is Azrael. He plays Command Tower as his land for turn and passes it to J-Man. He drops Orin Reef, the Vast Wood, a land that can give plus one plus one counters to his stuff. Forest hits the battlefield for Kovacs and he says go. On my turn I play a Mountain, beautiful Kamigawa land, and then a Plains hits the battlefield for Azrael. He passes again over to J-Man who plays a Forest. He then plays Sakura Tribe Elder. A very distinguished gentleman who goes by the name of Steve. And then over to Kovacs' turn, he drops a forest as his land for turn and plays Sylvan Anthem, which gives his green creatures plus one plus one and will also allow him to scry through some stuff. Plains hits the battlefield on my side of the board and I pass. Over to Azrael, he plays Reliquary Tower as a land for turn. And he says go over to J-Man who plays another forest and he follows that up by playing Champion of Lamb Holt, creature that will get thicker and swoller whenever other creatures enter his battlefield. On to combat, J-Man throws Steve at BK, and back to Kovacs, he plays, surprisingly, another forest, and casts his commander, Kodama of the West Tree. So this triggers Sylvan Anthem, giving him a scry, and he ships that to the bottom. I play an island as my land for turn, and pass it over to Azrael, who plays a plains, and then he's gonna start making it rain with a smothering tithe. He'll get a bunch of treasures whenever people draw, unless they pay two. On his end step, J-Man sacks Steve and gets a mountain and puts it onto the battlefield tapped. And onto J-Man's turn, he draws, giving Azrael a treasure, and casts his commander, Chishiro the Shattered Blade. This will give him some spirits and some plus one plus one counters on his modified things. On a combat, he hits Azrael, dropping him down to 38. At his end step, Chishiro triggers and gives a plus one plus one counter to his creature. On to Kovacs' turn, he plays another forest, and then Azrael finally finds his treasure tokens. Great job, buddy. Kovacs plays Sword of the Animist, and then he equips it to his commander, Kadama. So Kovacs sends his tree that's carrying a sword at Azrael. He deals damage, and this triggers both Sword and Kodama. So to save time, he grabs two forests and puts them on the battlefield tap. Spectator Seeding is my land for turn, followed by my own Smothering Tithe. It's about to get real treasury up in here. I pass the turn, Azrael draws, getting me a treasure. He then drops a Plains as his land for turn, followed by Psy Master Thopterist, which will produce him some Thopter tokens, and then he casts Foundry Inspector, which triggers Psy, netting him a Thopter token. Onto J-Man's turn, he draws, triggering both Smothering Tithes. We do that thing with our hands that you guys love so much, and J-Man had some sort of seizure with this card, I guess. Sword of Vengeance hits his battlefield, triggering his commander. This will get him a 2-2 red spirit token with menace. This will add another plus one plus one counter to champion. He then moves to combat with champion and Chishiro at Kovacs, dropping him down to 32. And on J-Man's end step, his commander will trigger, getting him another plus one plus one counter. More treasures for the two of us, and Buried Ruin hits Kovacs' battlefield, followed by an Orin Frost Fang. This will trigger Sylvan Anthem, getting him a scry and he puts that onto the bottom of his library before moving into combat at J-Man with his commander. J-Man throws his spirit token in front of it, but it has trample, so three go over the top in commander damage. Kovacs grabs a couple more forests and draws a card, triggering smothering tithes, but he does pay for Azrael's and makes him very sad. Onto my turn, I give one more treasure over to Azrael, play a command tower, and I follow that up by casting my commander. Hinata, Dawn Crowned. This will make it so everything that targets on the stack will have a cost reduction for me and a cost increase for everybody else. Heliod's Intervention is my first card played with Hinata on the board, and I destroy all of those things that I'm pointing at. In response, 
Azrael activates Psy, sacrificing some artifacts, drawing a card, triggering my Smothering Tithe, getting another treasure, and then it resolves blowing up all the other things I pointed out. And all of that was for the low, low cost of two white mana. So after that, I sack some treasures and play Archmage Emeritus, who will allow me to draw some cards when I cast instants or sorceries, or copy them for that matter. Onto Azrael's turn, he plays an island as his land. Then he casts Imposter Mech, and he'll have Imposter Mech become Hinata Dawncrowned, and I hate him. This also got him a Thopter off of Psy. Ghostly Prison is also played by Azrael, because he's fun. And over to J-Man's turn, he plays Rockfall Vale, a Gruel land coming in untapped. Swiftfoot Boots is cast. This will trigger his commander when it ETBs, and he gets another 2-2 red menacing spirit. This will also make it so Lamholt gets a plus one plus one counter. So with that, he moves to combat, and he attacks BK, dealing 10 points of damage. Then onto his end step, he triggers his commander again, getting another plus one plus one counter on his stuff. Kovacs draws for turn, getting me a treasure. Feels good to be the only one getting treasures right now. Another forest hits his battlefield, and then an X equals 8 Mist Cutter Hydra is cast. I mean, honestly, it's pretty scary. Uh, so then he moves into combat, and he smacks BK for another 8 points of damage, dropping me down to 21. His triggers, and he gets another forest and a card draw, getting me one more treasure as well. On my turn, I draw and drop another mountain as my land for turn, and I cast Soulfire Eruption for full rip cost, and it just feels completely awful. Imposter Mech being my own commander is awful. So Azrael, Thopter, Psy, this one, this one, J-Man. All right. This, 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 Kovacs. In response, J-Man casts Heroic Intervention, which gives his permanence hexproof and indestructible. So I start revealing cards and pinging down things, going in the order of priority. I kill a couple of things on Azrael's board and deal him one damage. Over to J-Man, I still am able to reveal a card and deal two damage to him. And now onto Kovacs' board state, I deal some points of damage at his things, but not enough to kill any of them. But I do smack him in the face for two points of damage as well. And in addition, I have access to those cards till the end of my next turn. So Azrael draws and plays Mist Gate Pathway as a land. Then he casts Universal Surveillance uh, with some help from Improvise. He draws five cards. This will trigger Smothering Tithe five times as well, which makes me very happy. Then over to J-Man's turn, another treasure for me. And then he casts Sword of Feast and Famine, triggering his commander, getting another 2-2 Spirit with Venice, triggering his Champion of Lamholt. He then equips Champion with the Sword of Feast and Famine and moves to combat over to BK. Uh, before combat damage resolves, I cast Swords to Plowshares on Champion of Lamholt. This will not only exile it, but also gain J-Man some life, bringing him up to 45. His spirit does connect and drops me down to 18. On his end step, he gets another plus one plus one counter on his spirit. Orin Reef, the Vast Wood, enters the battlefield on Kovacs' side of the board, followed up by Hardened Scales, which will allow his plus one plus one counters to be a little bit more plus one plus one counter-y. He swings his Hydra at Azrael, chipping away and dropping him down to 24. And again, this triggers his commander and Orin Frostfang, getting him a forest and a card draw, which triggers my Smothering Tithe, getting me another treasure. He then casts Phyrexian Hydra, a 7-7 Infect creature that can certainly start knocking opponents out of the game pretty quickly. On Kovacs' end step, I pay a little bit of extra mana in order to cast Crush Contraband, targeting the not Hinata Hinata, and this will free up my cost reduction that I really want. I then cast Brainstorm. This also triggers Archmage Emeritus, getting me another card draw. So I get to draw some additional cards and then put two cards back on top of my library. Onto my turn, I draw properly for turn, and then I play Prairie Stream out of the Exile Zone as my land for turn. I then cast Young Pyromancer from the Exile Zone as well, and in theory this will start generating some 1-1 one -one tokens for me. I follow that up by casting Mass Manipulation, where X will equal 4, therefore I get a cost reduction of 4. So I target all these creatures that I'm pointing out, sadly, and unfortunately one of them is Miscutter Hydra that has protection from blue, so I couldn't have targeted it with Mass Manipulation. Tamiyo's Safekeeping is cast, protecting Kovacs' Phyrexian Hydra. This will give it hexproof so I can't steal it. But again, here I do unfortunately grab that Miscutter Hydra, so it was definitely a read-the-whole-card kind of moment. 
but the, nevertheless the mistake was made. We do believe that this did not impact the game significantly enough to change the outcome of the game though, so we still hope you enjoy. We had some combat and a couple of triggers, and over to Azrael's turn he plays a planes followed by an arcane signet right on time. He casts his commander, Shorakai Genesis Engine, and is aiming to have some Shorakai shenanigans. On to J-Man's turn, he re-equips his Sword of Feast and Famine, this time on his Spirit, and moves to combat at BK. I declare no blocks and drop down to 12. This will untap J-Man's lands, make me discard Eerie Interlude. He then casts Concord with the Kami. This can put out some 1-1 counters, draw cards potentially, or make 1-1 Spirits. He does erroneously put a 1-1 counter on his Spirit, but we catch it before any real damage is done. Explore is cast on Kovax's turn. He can play an additional land, and he gets to draw a card. This triggers Smothering Tithe yet again. He drops another forest. He then pays a little bit extra to cast Bear Umbra and put it on his Phyrexian Hydra. He moves to combat at Azrael, and Azrael decides he does not want 9 points of Infect. Cyclonic Rift, your dude. But I decide that I do want him to have 9 poison counters. I have response. Oh, you know you don't. <laughs> no! No, come on! So I cast Mystic Confluence, having three targets. I counter target spell unless Azrael pays three, and I bounce two of J-Man's tokens back to his hand, which of course just disappear forever. And with all this happening, Azrael says, I've seen enough, and he scoops it up and allows the three of us to continue duking it out. In his second main phase, Kovacs casts Hungering Hydra, where X equals four. And of course, this becomes 5 because of Hardened Scales. He then activates Orin Reef, giving another counter, and again, an additional counter because of Hardened Scales. Onto my turn, I cast Dockside Extortionist, and I net 5 additional treasures, bringing me up to 7. Then I cast Disorder in the Court, targeting Kovax's creatures. This will have them exile and then return to the battlefield under his control at the end of my turn. I draw a card off of Archmage, get a 1-1. One, one. And I also get a few clues because of Disorder in the Court. Launch the Fleet is cast. I target all of the creatures that I'm going to have attack. And therefore, when they attack, I get a 1-1 one, one human that's tapped and attacking as well. So I attack with enough creatures to knock Kovacs out of the game. So again, the Mist Cutter Hydra should not have attacked him and dealt that damage. But we do still believe that the outcome of this game was not severely impacted by that. Post-combat, I cast a very timely Arcane Signet. And I pass it over to J-Man. On to his turn, he casts Rampant Rejuvenator, which will enter the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. He then equips his Swiftfoot Boots to it and goes for Broke at BK. I decide to Chump Block with my tokens and my Dockside, therefore he deals no damage to me. On his end step, he gets a 1-1. One, one. And onto my turn, I draw and I cast Crackle with Power. So X will equal 5. I gotta do the math, right? I don't really love math, and things get a little bit confusing with Hinata. At the end of the day, I deal 25 points of damage to all the things that I targeted, and then I move into combat, and I deal enough damage to knock J-Man out of the game. So I'm declared the winner, despite our little bit of an error that we had earlier in the game. So that's the game for you. Please let us know what you think. Again, we already know that we made a mistake, but feel free to leave a comment. Uh, please like the videos that you've been enjoying. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching. Good game, guys. Good math. Hanada is, like, challenging for me. I'm, I'm more smooth brain than this.